In this episode, we travel to Memphis, Tennessee, to a country music legend's home tiki bar modeled after Elvis's jungle room. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I am beside myself to welcome one of my favorite singer, songwriter, guitar player, storyteller guys of all time to his own bar. So I would like to welcome to the show, Mr. Dale Watson. How are you doing, Spike? Thanks for, you make this thing look like a, a set on a movie or something. Oh. It's pretty nice. Well, you guys decorated an incredible, it's basically an Airbnb, right? Right. That you have here in Memphis, but you also stay here part-time. Yeah, yeah, when we're in Memphis, uh, you know, whether I play Hernando's or, or mm -hmm. wherever in Memphis, I, I, we stay here. Yeah, you own a, what a, you call like a juke joint here in Memphis? Hernandez Hideaway. It's uh, world famous. It's been, uh, I mean, everybody's played there. Elvis, Johnny Cash, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis called it his office. Charlie Rich had a happy hour gig there. Uh, Booker T and the MGs were in the house band. Really? Duck Dunn. And, and it's, it was kind of a Memphis who's who. Matter of fact, Rockabilly Boogie, mm -hmm. you know, the Barnett Brothers, mm -hmm. when they sang that song, A Little Place, what's what, what they call it? Called the Hideaway. Oh, it's yeah. Fernando's Hideaway. No. Yeah. In the song. In the song, it says, yeah, going to a place, little place called the Hideaway. <laughs> That's insane. Can you imagine a happy hour with Charlie Rich? Yeah, and they said that uh, the reason I found out about it is because a, a customer came in and he said that, uh, yeah, I came here uh, one time to, to have a drink uh, because they used to open up pretty early and they, they were charging a cover charge. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you, what, what's this cover charge? I never cover charge a happy hour. Yeah. Well, we got this piano player. That's what the guy said. About Some you know, guy. Like this piano player. So the, so the beer, the, so it was like, I think it was two bucks. Yeah. They were charging. What year was that, do you think? I don't know. I imagine it's probably. Uh, 70s, 80s? No, no, no. no oh. It was 50s. Oh, 50s yeah. with Charlie Rich. So we just found out the other day going on the Sun Records tour that the last song that was recorded there at Sun was Lonely Weekends. Lonely Weekends. Week yeah. Well, they recorded the basic tracks. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I think they did the overdubs of the background singing and the and the claps, right? Which was actually not claps, uh, from what I understand. Jerry Phillips, who's Sam Phillips' son, they, they took real to real blanks, you know, they oh. clapped them together and made that sound. Okay. But that was done at Sam Phillips, of course, studio. He opened up in 1960. Did you ever think that maybe like the the backup vocals were like a little a little much, a little much? Yeah, I think that well, even uh, on uh, the last stuff that was recorded on Johnny Cash at Sun Studios was mm -hmm. uh, uh, like Teenage Queen and uh, Jack Clements. Oh, that. and so remember it's all that really too much. Yeah, too much. Too much backup stuff. But uh, I don't know. It, it was a hit. So what? What, what do I know? Uh -huh. <laughs> but we're not talking about uh, Jack Clement, or we're not talking about uh, Lonely Weekends guy. What was his name? Charlie Rich. Charlie Rich. <laughs> Or, or the guy whose sofa you own? Jerry Lee Lewis, it's, it's right in my uh, recording studio but under, underneath this house. Yeah, he's got a recording studio, all tape, downstairs. It's wild. I love you. We're talking about Elvis, though. Yeah, Elvis uh, played, well, he, he didn't have an official gig there. And actually- Oh, at Hernando's. Uh, uh, yeah. But the room. Oh, the room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Is that your favorite this, room this at is, Graceland? Uh, the Jungle Room? Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite. It kind of, I, I'm drawn to it now because we kind of, we, we even, we had to have these curtains made uh -huh. uh, because you, they, you can't find curtains like they're, they're in the jungle room. Yeah, right. But uh, what's her name, honey? Uh, Mary Paulson, she would do the beehives for everybody. She was dear friends with Elvis and been in the jungle room a lot. She said, I can make them curtains. And she did. So, oh. so it, it's become my favorite room. Right. Because uh, we really went Whitco and, Mm -hmm. And tiki dough. Yeah, so the whole room is filled with Whitco, like the, the the table over there and this bar here and, and the sofa. Uh huh. You gotta get one of those llama. Is like a llama. Was it? It was like a llama in there, right? Is it? Yeah, there's a uh, <laughs> there's a llama in the jungle yeah, I, room. I really want the waterfall. Well, yeah. That's, that's one of the waterfalls. I think you're gonna have to extend this place yeah, to do the waterfall. Bit, but yeah, again, that's why it's Lil Lil Graceland. It's that's not right. Graceland, it's Lil. Yeah, and then the rest of the place is all like 1950s, yeah. you'd say? 50s, yeah, 60s? Definitely. One of the rooms is very, I love Lucy. I mean, to the wallpaper yep. and the beds. We took a photo in there earlier. Not <laughs> not us, but uh, he and his wife. Yeah, we recreated the dogs. A, a Desi and Lucy uh, photo. It was famous of them in, in their bedroom. Laying in their And the other beds. bedroom is decked out uh, 50s elves. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, the bathroom is all pink. Mm -hmm. The, the backyard, though, is... is a, trailer park. Yeah, like a little trailer park. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Astro turf AstroTurf, and, and so uh -huh. it's, we, we try to make it make it home. And I keep my 58 Etzel here. I keep my 57 Fairlane mm -hmm. here. 
couple uh, of bikes. A couple of bikes. Uh -huh. It's just got a, a vibe of, if, if you like uh, this mid-century thing, it's what we kind of do. Got a jukebox, unfortunately, the power amp went out on it. I got to fix that, but we got a jukebox right here in, in the jungle room. And You're going to fill that all with uh, Elvis 45s, I heard? Elvis 45s. Yeah. Yeah. The mid-century looking TV, and it really looks like a 1950s TV, but it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy that, that makes them, and he puts a flat screen in them, and uh, it and looks it look, that way. Yeah, but it works I do good. have a Philco 1959 black and white TV in what we call the Peacock Room. Right. Yeah, we have the Peacock Room, which is like the living, living room of Elvis's Graceland with the piano in it and stuff. But then also in one of the, in the I Love Lucy room, you have a Philco Predicta. Yeah. Which that is, thing used to work. <laughs> yeah. It used to work and then the tube went up. So. They're all a pain in the ass, but yeah. they, they're fun. They're a pain in the ass. But I, but I see, that's the thing. I, if, I, if I got something old, I want it to work. Mm -hmm. right. Well, y'all seen that with the phone right today. Yeah. yeah, he's got a line, landline with like a rotary dial stuff. And I, I, it's so hard to even know where to go with this conversation because you have, you have performed with like all of the legends in country music and- I've been lucky, yeah. It's pretty wild, but we got to talk about this cocktail that we're going to make here. Well, this is, uh, no, I will tell you this. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of new to the tiki thing. I've, I've been to a couple of tiki bars that we mm -hmm. talked about, the one in, outside of Chicago, the- Oh, Halakahiki. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the one in uh, San Diego. Oh, the Bali High. Bali High. We actually played the same place on the same night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. At Don the Beachcomber, you were doing- Oh, an, yeah, yeah. You were doing an acoustic- now, would you consider that a tiki bar? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, well, I know Don, I guess, came up with some recipes too, right? Right, but that place was originally called Sam's Seafood. It was built in 1959, um, opened in 60. There's probably like 20 Milan Guanco carved tiki's there. Oh, wow. There's all kinds of waterfalls, and you, you know, you, you might have been in that mode where you're like, man, I'm playing a gig at this place, I just come in and do it, and yeah. A little yeah. bit, because, I mean, uh, we, we couldn't even eat in the main restaurant. They had us in this back room eating. And, yeah. You know, okay, it was just like the fishnet was hanging. What, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't really get the vibe of the Yeah, totally. You know? But you and you and the Reverend Horton Heat were doing like acoustic, just oh, trading yeah. songs. Okay. Yeah. And then my band, the Hula Girls, were in the Dagger Bar. We played all night and I could, I just kind of peeked in. I was like, damn it, I can't watch the show. I got to go do my oh, own. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, probably a good thing I didn't know y'all were there. So, but <laughs> but I was, what I was going to say though, uh, until... Uh, well, uh, we had Dancing Girls. God. I know. We got go-go dancers. You were there, Celine. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nick 13 is oh, what, yeah. what turned turn me on to uh, liking tiki bars, and, and my road manager at the time really latched onto that. So I got a, a nickname called Bakersfield Dale. Out of, do you know the tiki bar there? A tiki Co? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but tiki I was, Knockout? Yeah, well, I, I went, uh, there's Bakersfield Dale uh, uh, because of a, what was the drink? It was a drink. It was called the... Navy uh, Grog. Navy Grog. That's, that's what your wife told At me three. earlier. Is that why they, you got the hat? Yes. In the, in the Navy. Well, we got, we got we went to Hawaii, and that's where I got this shirt. Because uh, this was this a shirt that uh, uh, a copy from Elvis's shirt? I don't hmm. know. I don't think so. But uh, but anyway, uh, Avanti. Avanti. Oh right, yeah. And uh, so I, and I wanted to get the hat because oh. of uh, the movies he, that he. Did he wear the hat in or whatever? Wear the hat in you know why I have this watch? I know why you have that watch. I was looking at that watch earlier. I said, I didn't remember seeing that watch on you. What movie? I love that watch. What movie did he wear that watch in? No, I just thought he wore it, period. Blue Hawaii, 1961, okay. he wore that watch. Okay. I thought I, I thought he just wore the watch because I've seen it in lots of pictures. Yeah. And then... Uh, it's Elvis watch. They sell that over at the guest house for a lot of money. They also sell it over at Lansky. Yeah, Lansky, Lansky too. Yeah. And before Lansky, Bernard Lansky passed away, about 20 years ago, I went in there and uh, and he's like fitting me for a sweater that I didn't want, but he was like very convincing. And uh, he, he goes, hey, uh, you want to trade watches? He had like a Timex or something on. And I go, well, I, you know, I kind of like this one. And he goes, it don't matter because Elvis gave me three of those in gold. <laughs> I was like, wow. I was like, you just wanted to say that, didn't you? And he was like, <laughs> yeah. and he also swore more than ever, any, anybody I've ever heard. Really? Lansky, yeah. Wow. He swore the whole time. Well, have you seen this book? Come on in, son. What, what, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So he, yeah, he used to, he outfitted Elvis yeah, in the so early I'm, days. You may have lost people there. Uh, Lansky is where Elvis got all his clothes here in Memphis. And to this day, it's, it's still my favorite place to shop for cool clothes. Man. I got mm -hmm. I got tons of shirts and jackets from there. <laughs> yeah. Tons of shoes, everything. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we could keep talking uh, about Lansky and Elvis and all kinds of stuff, but we have a cocktail that we decided we're gonna make, and it's a bourbon cocktail. Well, 
uh, uh, you and Celine decided I was going to make. It, it, it sounds kind of scary to me because a Navy grog is is one that uh, you know turns me into Bakersfield Dale. Right. So is this going to make me Memphis Memphis Dale? What's this going to be? I don't know. Maybe. What, what's the name of it? <laughs> it's called the Polynesian Paralysis. Yeah. So <laughs> that could have been the Navy grog. It could have been. Yeah. Polynesian Navy grog's a, a delicious cocktail, though, isn't it? Yeah, it went down too easy. Yeah. Was, I mean, three of them, boom, 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 like that. So there's, I think there's three ounces of rum in each one of those. So oh. you drink nine ounces of rum. Wow. So for the Polynesian paralysis, in this cocktail, we will be using oranges, Orange. lemons, limes. That's all you got. Where's the, uh, <laughs> what else you need? Where's the uh, pineapple juice? You have oh, the pineapple, pineapple juice? juice? Yeah. There's the what? Yeah. Celine Lee. Celine, you want to? <laughs> Celine, everybody. Celine, Celine. <laughs> and pineapple juice. So, okay, pineapple okay. juice. Orange, lemon, lime, and pineapple juice. Simple syrup. What is simple syrup? Simple syrup. Yeah, it's just sugar and water. Okay. Orgeat. <laughs> that. Is that a real word? Yeah. Orgeat. So, were you really even trying to say orange juice or? No, orgeat. Almond orgeat. Yeah. Do you know, you know Billy Zoom? Yeah. From X? Yeah, sure. <laughs> So he was on my show and I go, uh, I go, Falernum, and he goes, what? Falernum. What? Okay, hold this oh, up. Oh, hey, if anybody of Merle Haggard fans, you know what this is. What, so what's the deal with Merle Haggard? But Merle Haggard would say it, uh, a little dickle do you. A little what? A little, little dickle do you. Oh, a little dickle. I thought you dickle said. Dickle bourbon. That's right. I thought you said something else. And so did everybody else. Uh, George Dickle bourbon, that was the only booze that I knew that, uh, Merle Haggard endorsed. You wrote a song with Ray Benson from Asleep at the Wheel about ab Merle about yeah. Merle when he passed away. Yep, uh, Ray had already started writing it and uh, he called me up and said, uh, I'd like you to help me finish that song I started. I mm -hmm. said, yeah, great, I'd love to. He said, but I gotta be honest with you, you're my third call. Uh, he said, he said uh, well, I'm just honored you call me, Ray, because I love Ray very much. Yeah. So talented and he's helped me out in so many ways. But So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad. He said, mm -hmm. well, let me tell you. So the first person I called was Willie. Mm -hmm. And Willie was in Hawaii. Yeah. And the uh, second person I called was George. Now in Texas, we know since George Jones is gone, the only there's only one other George. That's George Strait. And he was out of Texas for some reason. But, okay. Uh, so he said, so I called you next. So well, that's a it's a really good company. <laughs> yeah, it's so good company. Thinking, Were you buddies with Merle Haggard? Uh, no, I, I got to hang out with him a few times, and, and my, okay. there was uh, actually two hours on his bus in Roanoke, Virginia. Where I was fueling up. Mm -hmm. I used to own the bus that Ray Price owned, and a lot of people have toured on it, but. I was fueling up there, and this guy comes up and says, "Hey, uh, uh, is this your bus?" I said, "Yeah." He says, uh, "You know, uh, my boss would like to talk to you. you, you, you spare a minute." He says, well, "Who's your boss?" Mm -hmm. "It's Merle Haggard." I go, "Sure, <laughs> all right." So okay. I'm fueling up, I go over, park beside his his bus, and go up. He says, I "Introduce myself." He says, "Yeah, I think I heard you." I, I says, uh, "But that's Ray Price's bus, isn't it?" I said, "Yes, sir, it is." He says, "I knew it could." He says, "Merle never forgot a tour bus." Mm -hmm. he, he, but he said that bus in particular is the most fun I've ever had in a front lounge of a bus Oh, in my life. Wow. It's he he just me and Willie and Ray smoking joints mm -hmm. and passing the guitar around, <laughs> singing songs. Jeez. He says, that's, that's the most fun I ever had ever. It's just a great memory. And every time I see that bus, that's all I can think of. So, Was it wild to own something that had that kind of history behind it? Yeah, and I hated to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, it's not like I got rid of it. I, I sold it to Texas uh, Music uh, uh, History. Oh, okay. So it's around. It's not getting wrecked. Yeah, I know. Matter of fact, they're, they're get it where you can walk on and see the tours. And oh, stuff. cool. But, but yeah, George Dickel bourbon. That's what we got on this one. Okay, so this is a bourbon cocktail. This is a classic tiki cocktail, one of the rare bourbon ones. But we figured that while we're here in Tennessee, we could do something that's more Tennessee. Now, is this a Tennessee bourbon? Because I, I never, I, like I so. never knew. I, Wait, is it? Uh, I don't see nothing. No, no, to be called a bourbon. I think you got to be from Kentucky to be called a bourbon. Right. Isn't yeah. that right? Bourbon, yeah, yeah. Kentucky. Now, we get so. by with it in Texas. We got a couple of bourbons in Texas. I don't know how they got by with that. This has got to be This got to be Tennessee. I think you're right. Okay. Because that's, that's supposed to be the rule. Well, there it is. Tullahoma, Tennessee. There you go. You got, a, uh, you got a favorite beer, by the way? You know, I do. Let me try to think what it is. Oh, yeah. My favorite beer in the whole wide world is National Beer of Texas. The only beer you should be drinking, really. It'd probably go great in this tiki drink. I should have more tiki drinks with the best beer in the world. 
Okay, so let's get started here. We're, we need three ounces of orange juice per cocktail. So if you'll grab an orange, all right. and if you can cut that guy in half. I can do that. Don't cut your fingers off. We need those for uh, country uh, music. That's a weird half, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to spray you in the face with this thing. We're looking for three ounces. This is, oh man. My eyes! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's all right. Okay. Is that the ounce thing? Yeah, that's the ounce thing. You need three of these? Well, this is going to be a one and a half right here. This is kind of a big cocktail. It's supposed to be served in a in a tiki bowl, but I, you know, I didn't really feel comfortable drinking out of the same bowl as you, well, you know. So we're going to make one cocktail. We're going to split up between the two of us. I guess it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it makes sense. So that's one and a half ounces. If you want to pour that into that big tin there. Right here. Okay. And then we need another orange. We can't get rid of that one? No, man, that, that, this guy's dead. Oh, I don't know. Just, you gotta squeeze hard in there. Where are you? Wait, let me okay, go. Okay, you gonna do this one? Yeah, I'll do this Okay. One. Oh, there's a seed in there. That's okay. You wash your hands before you do this? Oh, man, yeah. I, just, I just peed, too. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. I didn't either. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's really weird. Is that enough? No, nah, we really need... We gotta probably grab another orange then. Really? Yeah. Wait, no, before you do that, let's top it off with uh, another orange. Top it off? Yeah. It's gotta be all the way to the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so even if it, if it costs I mean, us another I, orange. I, I think you still got more left mm. in yours, man. Look at that. Oh, man. Waste not, what not. I'm getting uh, Dale's hands all in the cocktail here. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're right. You don't feel comfortable with that one more? Um, Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. This might be happy. Like, Thank you. Is that enough? No, man. We gotta go to the top. That's not the top. That's the top. Oh no, I'm going past the top. <laughs> that's good right there. Man, it's got more seeds in it than Willie's. Willie's a batch. <laughs> that's a joke. It's a weed yeah, joke. It's a weed joke. Willie, get it. We need three ounces oh. of unsweetened pineapple juice. So we need two more of these of that. Three ounces. Yeah. Two more. Yeah, two more. And Wait, no, all the way to the top. You're that guy. This ain't no uh, Bourbon Street bartending. Okay, all right. Beale Street. Oh, Beale Street, sorry. I don't know where I am. I've never been to Bourbon Street. You been to Bourbon Street? Uh, yeah, I, but I don't remember. <laughs> right. okay. Cut it in half. Yep. So we need one and a half ounces. That means one of those. One of those. Yeah, of lemon juice. I'll try to keep my ugly <laughs> fingers there. Oh, one's gonna do that. Yeah. Well, you can play the guitar. You should be able to squeeze a lemon. Good think. I think you're squeezing it outside of the. <laughs> Is there a certain way this goes, or maybe uh, you want to try one of these? Oh. Well, why didn't you pull that out earlier, man? That's what she said. <laughs> Let me go. In, I got another one here. Oh, you, oh, oh, there you go. Now look here. <laughs> that way we're not wasting more lemons. You know how, uh, oh, you don't want to waste these lemons. Scarce they are. That would have been good to have right on the beginning of squeezing these lemons. Oh, you want to do the next one? Wouldn't it? Have you ever used one of these before? No, never have. Is it hard? I mean. That's what she said. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Is that close enough? Almost hit the camera, yeah. I think that's good right there. Really? Yeah. It's not up to the top. But, yeah. uh, okay. Let's bring Celine in again to uh, to grab all the empty shells here. Thank you, Celine. That's right. So if you do want to rent this place to stay for like a weekend, go see Graceland and stuff. You can find it on uh, what Pier Space or uh, Airbnb right now. Airbnb. Okay. It's called Little Lil L I L Graceland. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what's next here. Okay, half an ounce of simple syrup. We don't have a, a ton of like fancy measuring tools here, so we're just using One, this. Two. Okay, cool. You can pour that into the concoction there. Half an ounce of simple syrup. What you don't know is before we uh, started this, we had a, a couple of Mai Tais, mm -hmm. which were fantastic. He made these. Thank you. One ounce of orgeat. So here's the orgeat. You ever tasted orgeat? It's almond liqueur, in case you haven't been Thank you. Attention. Thank you, doctor. Yes. Uh, you want to taste this? One ounce? Here. Oh, let me taste it. Yeah. yeah. Not bad, right? Yeah, it's good. Okay. So I, I can see that in a lot of tiki things. 
It tells you what how to make a Mai Tai on the side of that. Yeah. Is my tie, that went in my tie? The one we had? Yeah, same one. Okay. Okay, so one ounce. So we'll go to the top of this guy here. Oh, wait. Celine's saying that we need to shake this. She's horrified by this. Oh, okay. Thank you. You just saved us from the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That would have been some. I really should have shook that. Yeah, exactly. That's the guy in the basement. I really should have shook that. <laughs> that's right. Perfect. Okay. Throw that in there. Yeah, throw it in there. And three ounces of Dickel bourbon. All right. Uh, now we're getting to the serious stuff. Okay. I'll just have a sip of the best beer in the world while you're working on that Dickel bourbon. Oh, okay. Best beer in the world. Bone Star. National beer of Texas. The only beer you should be drinking. You can even have it as a chaser for your Mai Tai. Bone Star. We need three ounces of this, so we need two of this. Oh, what do you got there, uh, well, this is Dale? Dickel bourbon. Yeah. The only bourbon that Merle Haggard drank. But what, what did you, uh, you got a, what do you got, a cork there? Yeah. What, <laughs> what do you got, is there something about the cork you need to tell us about? No, nope, nothing about the cork. What, uh, what do you think about corks? I prefer corks over the screw tops. I mean, it just to me, it just says kind of, they care. See? It's a true American statement right that's, there. That's, I don't like wines that screw, you know. The, screw top wine? No, man. No. What about out of a box? No, no boxes, no boxes, no uh, no cans. No. No. No, no. nobody's drinking a can of wine. Well, somebody yeah. is. Somebody, that's, you know, but no. Gotta, gotta be corked. <laughs> okay. Now, how many of these do we do? We need two of those. Two of these. Yeah, so you you and I are each gonna drink one of those. That's a, this is saving you from Bakersfield Dale. <laughs> Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I got to drive to uh, Nashville after this. Oh, I, oh. my lady friend's going to no, be driving. Bev is going to be driving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the traditional recipe calls for us to blend this with ice and then drink it out of a bowl. But we're in, we're in where, where the hell are we? Tennessee. We're in Memphis. Uh, well, we don't have blenders in Memphis. No. Uh, but we do have a, a, a bullet. Bull Magic bullet. bullet? Magic bullet. I think it'd do the same thing. So you get an ice. Bring on, bring on the ice there, Beverly. Look at this ice. This ice. <laughs> Look at where she got this. Beverly uh, went to Sonic. Uh, apparently in Tennessee, they don't sell you ice, like by the bag. They well, no, no. Let's take it back. Oh. They don't sell you crushed ice oh. by the bag. Oh. Uh, but well, you say you get it crushed ice in at the Sonic in... In California, yeah. Well, we got... I don't know. I think that Sonic started in Tennessee, didn't it? I didn't know they ever sold bags of crushed ice. Oh. That's pretty cool, because I love the crushed ice. I love the crushed ice, too. It says 12 ounces of crushed ice. Do we have somewhere to plug that in? Yeah, we got, a, we got an hour plug right here. Actually, I have to say that uh, the Magic Bullet is uh, a really good way to do this. Oh, I okay. I think. Yeah. I'm gonna do, because it's already uh, crushed, it's just gonna, like you said, you want it slushy, right? It's supposed to be slushy. All right, well, it's gonna be slushy. Uh, that goes to that goes to one of the lights on the sides. We can kill one of the lights for a second. Okay. Okay, it says 12 ounces of this ice. How, how much is 12 ounces of ice? Uh, fill it up. That's, what I say. That's your a professional opinion? Yep. As a Telecaster guitar player. Yes, it looks like 12 ounces to me. Is that your favorite uh, kind of guitar? Telecaster? Yeah, Tele is, and mm. uh, I, I, I love my Telecaster. Oh, we gotta put some, did you put the juice in there? No. Oh, we gotta, we gotta put the drink in there. Oh. We gotta put we the got, drink in there. We gotta put the drink in there? Yeah! Of course! He's a Telecaster guitar player, not a bartender. Not a bartender. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of did weird. I don't know if that's gonna work. I think once you get that, uh, once you get the juice in there, we'll be okay. You think so? Yeah. All right. Well, at the very least, we could. Oh. Maybe you can stop there. No. No. Shh. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. It's gonna spill everywhere. I know what I'm doing. Is there still stuff in there? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, okay. You want, you well, then you wanna just, you wanna just like pour some of that in there and we can do it like in batches? No? Okay. I think it's gonna be great. This is gonna be awesome. Okay. Look at that. 
Oh. How long we do it? That's good. 10 to 12 seconds. It's probably like 10 to 12 seconds, right? That looks good. That looks yeah. Good. Looks like an orange yeah. bang. You know what? Can we can we get a couple of see-through glasses so we can so we can show people what this is? We, well, we got a boot. It looks like. Oh no no no! Let's have a, uh, is that all right to do it in or? Uh, well, we kind of need a bigger glass than that. We got a Lone Star carafe. Yeah, well, that was, that's perfect. But... Okay, so I want people to see this. this is, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. So. But what about the other stuff in there? Uh, is, did you say there's more in there? There is more in there. Well, you, want, you want to bring it up in here too? Well, I don't want to miss out on any of that, that bourbon. You're right. You're right. I'm with you. I'm with you. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to pour a little bit uh -huh. in here. Yep. A little bit. Oh. In here. Yep. Then we're going to pour the rest of this in there. Whitco bars are tricky because that could have gone wrong. It's not a flat top so much. It's not. All right, let's just. There you go. Oh. Ha. Okay. Perfect. Oh, yeah, I think we are too. So can we get rid of this now? Yes, get rid of it. Okay. There you go. Perfect. There. Back in business. Like a couple of professionals. That's right. Get this. Uh, I don't want to cheat you out of your share. <laughs> you work hard on it. I feel like we just robbed a bank. I know, right? <laughs> okay, well, there's your half. You were the driver. I was, okay. I helped, you helped. One for me, mm -hmm. one for you. That's a big drink, man. I know, man. Look at that. I think we did good. That's okay. Pretty fair, huh? Folks, if you've enjoyed this so far, please be sure to like, hit the subscribe button, join our Patreon. If you join the Patreon, I will send you this enamel pin like I'm giving to Mr. Dale Watson here. I'll take it. For being on, <laughs> for being on the show. Thanks for having me here at Glad Little Graceland. Spike, thanks a lot. Yeah. Had fun and you and the gals today. And and uh, please uh, uh, don't uh, not like him because of me being on here. Because yeah. I don't know what the hell I was doing. And so from Little Graceland in... Just <laughs> South Memphis, which uh, most people don't realize, White Haven is just South Memphis. That's where uh, Hernandez Hideaway is. It's the sister city to Las Vegas. We got the same palm trees and gardens and everything. It's almost identical. How far away is Elvis's house from here? A uh, mile and a half. Wow. And so, from Memphis, Tennessee, at Little Graceland, this is the Polynesian Paralysis. <laughs> Good night, Dale. Good night, Spike. Damn, we did it. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> it's only met now. It is missing a straw and umbrella and, and yeah. uh, some other booty. We're in Memphis. It's kind of hard to come by um, umbrella paper umbrellas and stuff. And straws. That's good. So, so curly straws. This can't just be right. It's gonna be a curly straw. So I taste. Uh, I taste like the pineapple juice up front. Right. What's funny is I taste the uh, uh, that almond thing. Oh. I taste that more. It's really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I could totally go Bakersfield Dell on this right here. Oh, you'll see me running down the middle of the streets. <laughs> Whitehaven. Do you have a favorite guitar player? One that came to mind is uh, uh, Roy Nichols, James Burton, mm -hmm. uh, Dwayne Eddy, mm -hmm. Red Volkart. Oh, yeah, Telecaster guy. And uh, but and, you know, but I like I like uh, uh, very much uh, the early guys. You know, I mean Chuck Berry. The people don't really think of him as because he's such a great writer and everything. But, yeah, right. But uh, but uh, it's it's got to be. Uh, James Burton and Scotty Moore, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, I'm just I, I like them roots guys that, that keep it simple. Yeah, and of course James Burton played with Ricky Nelson as well as Elvis and Seventeen Dale Hawkins. years old, yeah, he he played on uh, Susie Q. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and then Scotty, of course, started with Elvis in 1954. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but yeah, so it's, that's why a part of the Sun thing has always uh, drew me because. You know, Scotty played there and, and Luther, you know. Mm -hmm. Or Luther Perkins, yeah. Because his simplicity was brilliant, you know. And well, what did they say to Luther Perkins? Like, hey, Luther, why don't you play all of them fancy notes or whatever? And he, Luther Perkins said something like, oh, those other guitar players are still looking for it. <laughs> I already found it. No, well, here's, here's the thing about Luther's playing. I, I'm always amazed at how people overdo it, right. overplay it, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, not that I play it right. I'm not, I'm, I'm, don't, because it is, it, sometimes it's very hard to be to play it just straight ahead forward. Yeah, you know, without trying to put something special on it. You know. Well, I think that's also like bands like the Ventures that were very mm -hmm. simple and clean, and like either you play the song right or you don't. 
<laughs> well, the instrumentalist guys like the Ventures, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you know, Scotty Moore did an instrumental album, and, and uh, oh, and James Burton did with with Ralph Mooney. That's when you get down to brass tacks. You'll be another guy uh, who's just as influential influential as, as them guys, uh, Don Rich. Oh, right, you know? with Buck Owens. And, and that's a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of California influence there. Mm -hmm. you know? But man, it's it's not covered up with the fuzz and the, oh, and, yeah. the and the effects. You're really out there naked, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, even, like, yeah. yeah. You know, even with reverb uh, that the Ventures had and and, uh, and Dick Dale and, and uh, 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 Dwayne Eddy had. Mm -hmm. You can hide stuff, right? You, well, you can hide it, but uh, it, it covers up a little bit, but man, uh, uh, intonation is a big deal. And I don't have it. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's just something. Yeah. Some people got it and some people don't. And I don't know. I think it, you're probably a pretty good guitar player. Uh, I get by. <laughs> I get by. But, uh, uh, but it's it's one thing you you just you just cannot cover up stuff with just reverb. Oh uh, right. You can put you can put all the delay and you can put mm -hmm. the distortion and all that stuff and you can pass off as a as a good player. But once you Red Volcar told me this early on when I first met him. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in L.A. I and I didn't know he played guitar because he walked in with a, a bass on his back and an electric bass, a cube speaker, and a little bitty Woods amp. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was the uh, bass player. And uh, then the next night he came in, he played guitar. He just, I was like, what are you doing? He said, I thought you were bass. He said, nah. His playing just blew me away. Yeah. And I said, well, man, I, I want to take some lessons. He said, well, first thing you got to do is get rid of all them Christmas lights. Oh, with all the all the pedals and all Man, that. I had, I, yeah, I came in, I came, uh, I moved to town from Texas uh, into, into LA, and I had all this this Ibanez five oh, back thing. Yeah, right. And, pedal, and, it was, and it had all these. He said, "Get rid of all them Christmas lights." He says, well, and just plug right into the amp. Yeah. And so I did that. And I go, ooh. He goes, yeah. So once you can live with that, mm -hmm. then you want to add some effects. But until you're happy with that. You're not adding effects. I haven't added effects since. I'm still, wow, good <laughs> I'm advice. Still not happy, but it, yeah. it is good advice because your uh, you, your intonation has to get better. Mm -hmm. Your playing has to uh, improve because you got no crutches. So I think the big connection to to Dale to the tiki world to uh, say surf music or instrumental music beyond his own jungle room here and all the Whitco and everything is that during COVID you released your own instrumental record. I did, yeah. Now, you know, I always tell people it was that, uh, uh, we used to call it a, a round to it. Mm. You know, uh, <laughs> I get it. When you, when you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that when I get around to it. So some people used to make round to it. Mm. Here, the round to it. You, so COVID was my big round to it. Right. I always said I'd like to do an instrumental record. And so uh, I had all the time in the world. I got a studio underneath me and had a bar full of blues. <laughs> so I practiced, we practiced at, the, at Hernando's and, uh, then we brought it here at the studio and yeah. recorded. Uh, it's called the Memphians. The Memphians. And I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. You know, uh, again, it's not nothing fancy, mm -hmm. but uh, me and the band I use here in Memphis when I play here sometimes it's called the Memphians. Uh, it's, it's it's a pretty decent record. It's pretty a great record. record. I, yeah. I listened to it the other night with uh, with his wife and my buddy or my what do I call you? And Beverly. Oh the hell yeah it was super good record and uh hopefully we can get you to like maybe some of those surf kind of events where you can do that stuff live i'd love to yeah. fact, there's one song on there called agent elvis i love that because one because that was uh inspired because when he went to uh washington dc uh -huh. and uh he got a dea badge badge for yeah yeah nixon <laughs> Uh -huh. Agent but, Elvis. But, oh, I get but it. then they came out with a TV series called that. Oh, really? Yeah. Agent Elvis. It's a cartoon, uh, uh, right? An animated. Netflix. It's oh. on Netflix. And I, and I said, man, and now I wrote that song way before that thing came out. Yeah. Oh, maybe you can get a piece of that. Well, I, I, I thought so you ought to use my song. It's, it's an instrumental. Use yeah. It's your theme song. It's perfect. It has Matthew McConaughey as Elvis's voice. Yeah. Did this taste like a, it tastes like a whiskey orange bang. Doesn't it? Uh, my palate is not as sophisticated as yours, but I will say this: that this tastes like a a type of daiquiri. Oh, to me. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the I, I mean, I, I, the bourbon is. I don't know if they. I don't think they use bourbon daiquiris. Right? No, they use they use rum. Okay, well. But this is kind of I a think better. Of, I think because of the almond 
Um, that almond liqueur and and, uh, and the bourbon kind of. I think I just discovered if you mix almond liqueur with bourbon, mm -hmm. it's rum. Take that to the bank. I'm serious. That lesson was brought to you by the National Beer of Texas. Lone Star. I can't say it unless it's true. Almond liqueur, bourbon, rum. Lone Star. Huh. Folks, if you have enjoyed this, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you don't hit that like button, all your kids will be born naked. And ones that are, uh, and when they grow up, they're going to be just like you. My God. <clears throat> you know, uh, don't go anywhere. Almost forgot. There's like a. Uh... Oh, there's a thing. Oh, yeah. What are you going to try? Oh. I thought you didn't drink whiskey. I don't. It's just a sip. Just... <laughs> what do you, you think? like daiquiris or something? Doesn't it taste like You like daiquiri? it? It's really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love this stuff, though. That almond liqueur thing? There, uh, there is one other thing that uh, <clears throat> has kind of started to become like a bit of a tradition here on the show. And um, people started giving me bottles of this stuff. I can't wait to taste this. About about two hours ago, so you tell you, me who who are these people who hate you that gave you that? About two or three hours ago, I said, "Hey, uh, you want to drink some Malort?" And he would just about ran down the street. I, I don't want to do this any more than you do. Is that too much? Of course, uh, the thimbleful is too much. But I just have to ask, though, uh, mm. uh, who is it that, that that doesn't like you that gave you this that, that started this tradition? <laughs> My fans. <laughs> They're trying to kill you. I don't think you need to shoot it, but you know, as long as oh, you Oh no, no, you need to shoot it. Okay. Malort is something you do not savor, folks. Mm -hmm. It's not a sipping alcohol. It was it was invented by Satan. Yeah. As, as a as a curse to your tongue and palate. Yes. And for some reason, it holds some sort of charm with our fellow Chicagoans. We're very proud of this shit. <laughs> and I think they're just proud that, oh, we're going to make these guys drink this shit. Yeah. So, fellow Chicagoans and people who like Malort, both of you, fuck yourself. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank you. May I have another? <laughs> Oh God! This is so that is fucking. That's a horrifying thing. Oh. Is it, is it really? Beverly, you want to taste it? Just really sold me on it. Oh, <laughs> come here. Come on. You know, and that's what's so funny about it is that, that it's <laughs> that, yeah. that it's yeah. you, it's so bad. You think, well, it can't be that bad. Right. That's how. I'm come around. Be. This is our friend Beverly. Hi. Can you I just did a photo shoot here today at Little Grayson? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know if I'm going to be your friend anymore. We were shooting. Oh, well, after this, you definitely right. won't. We were shooting photos for Lucky Thirteen. Okay, there you go. All right, let me get my chaser ready. Yes, I would. Good advice. Oh, come on! Wow. <laughs> that was not it's not as bad as I remember. It's gross, but... Show's over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we are not men.